Games, featuring a series of partner events which will highlight your favorite products, manufacturers, artists, and more. Join us every day at 2 o'clock p.m. from November 1st through December 20th for exciting interviews, live audience Q&As, and a chance to win special prizes. Head over to the Fishman YouTube channel now to subscribe and set your notifications so you don't miss out on any of these events. So along with using the Fluence pickups, uh, I've also dabbled a bit with the uh, Fishman acoustic product line. I have a Fishman acoustic pickup on my slimline nylon string, um, and I use that in conjunction with the Aura pedal, which is made for acoustic instruments, whether a steel string, nylon, or any other type of acoustic instrument. The cool thing about that is that it has a bunch of different mic sims. It makes it sound like it's an actual room, as opposed to a super DI sound. Very versatile. I can use a blend of the pedal with a DI. It has a little compressor in it and some EQ. Very useful tool. I use it quite a bit live. Another feature that I like about the Aura is that it has a direct out so that I can go directly from the pedal to front of house and not have to use any microphones, not have to use any cabs or anything like that to kind of get the sound that I need.
Welcome everybody. This is the Fishman Partnership Series. I am your host, Ken Susi. If you're watching this feed right now, you are most likely on the Fishman Facebook, the Fishman YouTube, or the Lanakai Facebook. Uh, we're broadcasting across all of our social channels just so you guys can watch this great event. If you're not new, if you're if you're not familiar with the partnership series, what this is is every day at two o'clock, we go live with one of our important partners. Obviously, Fishman has takes a lot of care. We do a lot of uh, we take a lot of pride in our products as well as our partners, and we have great relationships with them. So we are here to showcase that, and we're giving you guys the opportunity to also jump into the conversation. Um, so one thing that we are doing today is we're giving away. Well, actually, we're doing a giveaway. So attached to this live stream, you're going to see a link. Click the link and enter. Get your chance to enter uh, into our contest for Atlantic Eye Julia Michaels White Pearl uh, Ukulele by Atlantic Eye. So this is very, very exciting. Make sure to click the link in the description. Right now, uh, we have Mr. Rob Ketch. He, he is the yeah. Senior Vice President of Sales. Hi, how you doing, Rob? I'm doing good, Ken. How about you? I'm living... I'm absolutely living the dream. <laughs> so um, I think we should not waste any time and bring up our guests. We have Derek Frank and Rock Clauser from Lanakai. How you guys doing? Doing well. How you guys doing? Uh, we're both living the dream. I, I have to be upfront and honest with you guys. So yesterday I crossed Rob in the halls and I said, we're talking ukuleles, so you better be wearing a flowered shirt because I'm wearing a flowered shirt, and I didn't live up to the expectation. I'm going to show you Rob Ketch real quick. He's wearing a flowered shirt. He looks That's amazing. It. As <laughs> close as I have to Aloha wear. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you guys real quick. Um, so let's start off. Obviously, you guys have been in the music biz business for a while, but how did you both first encounter music? I'll, I'll let you start. <laughs> wow. Uh, music for me started around age nine and uh, has never stopped. Uh, I play about uh, 12 different string instruments, all string instruments. I have uh, nothing in winds or percussion or anything like that, but all strings. So I've always had a, a, a real interest in strings and how how they're they're done. I have a, a large guitar collection, uh, played in several bands and all of that. Um, but uh, just worked in retail and and um, and uh, kind of jumped over to the manufacturing side and the uh, dis distribution side um but uh, just really getting all of the different angles uh, for me and it's just interesting uh to see all of the different sides so um and that's one of the things about working here uh for me is uh we're we're 20 brands under one roof so we don't do just one thing so um, that's kind of uh, a quick thumbnail of, of where I started uh, to to how I got here. How, what what did it for you? Um, I mean, I've been playing drums since I was four. My dad is an incredible bass player, but uh, he had a drummer that owed him money and he wouldn't give him his kit back until he paid him. Um, typical drummer. <laughs> and uh, so that's how I got started. And uh, all through high school was uh, into singing and, and playing and then I decided I wanted to be a front man, so I started playing more guitar and um, graduated from Eastern Illinois University with a music education degree, then moved to Nashville, did the touring thing, and here I am doing artist relations. I was going to say, that was that was my next question. Before I, before I ask it, everyone that's watching out there, obviously the line is open. We can, right now people are saying, San Dimas High School Football Rules. Bill and Ted quote, I don't know why, but uh, we will be posting your questions right on the screen. Please follow up, ask us questions, ask Derek and Rock some questions as well too. But yeah, that's, that's actually the question I wanted to ask and you kind of led us there. Um, can you tell the audience a little bit about how like you got into the incredible position you are in now at Atlantic High? Because it's, it's tough to get a gig in the music industry. Yeah, um, me personally, I moved to Nashville and uh, helped open the Nashville School of Rock here in town, which is a really successful location. And um, I loved it. I was there for three years and just kept building on that experience and then went on tour full time as an artist. And uh, I was getting burnt out on the road. So um, I knew some people that worked here at KHS America and Lanakai and was like, hey, guys, um, maybe I want a desk job again. 
and I, I was here for in sales for about a year and the position opened for artist relations. And I was like, well, this is perfect. I've already been an artist. I kind of get that world a little bit more. And uh, so I've been in this role about two and a half years now. And, and it's been great. I love it. It's a cool job. Nice. How about you, Rock? Well, for me, I, I came into the music industry uh, other than performing uh, through uh, teaching and had a lot of, of lessons uh, every week. And for years, I taught uh, well, about 50 lessons um, a week uh, and tried to uh, uh, bring as many people into the music business as possible through their playing. But uh, working in stores, uh, eventually became a manager of the store. And we were a store that at that time we stocked 21 brands of guitars. So uh, I had to kind of learn all the ins and outs of, of guitars and, and uh, what made each guitar brand what it is. And I think that's been very influential in kind of designing is, is what is this brand. Um, so uh, from the designing part of it, I jumped over into distribution and uh, the company that I worked for at that time bought some brands and said, does anybody know anything about guitars and, and uh, possibly designing them? And I said, well, I used to uh, custom order uh, instruments. So, uh, yeah, I, I know a little bit about it. And they said, OK, uh, we, we're going to uh, give some things to use. So uh, go wild. So uh, I went wild and uh, it, it seemed to work. Uh, more than not. So um, there's not really a, a school for it per se. You, you have to take a lot of things in uh, as, as Derek was, was talking about varied experience. Um, and that's kind of what, what led me here. Um, it's not been one uh, location. I've moved a few times, but uh, you kind of have to go where the industry takes you in this business. Um, but uh, it's, it's keeping your eyes and ears open, uh, building on every experience and kind of taking something away and uh, doing things better and better and, and, and learning from everything. So um, that's what eventually led me to, uh, to here. And um, through my history of doing a lot of different instruments, um, Lanakai was at a point where it needed to be redesigned and kind of refreshed. And uh, I wanted to be very true to the brand and, and, take it to a, a place that would be beneficial for the brand, but not exit what it had been in the past. And so uh, that's kind of what led us here today. That's amazing. Actually, I love the, I love both the, you know, the differences between your stories, but it's, 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 it's awesome for those that are watching out there that aspire to be artist relations guys or work for a company. It's, it's great to hear your story. So let me ask you this question. Um, and I know my reasons for being at Fishman, but what do you like the most about working for your company? Well, as I said a little bit earlier, uh, we're 20 brands. So uh, we do uh, harmonicas and accordions and wind instruments, percussion, uh, guitar stands. I mean, we do a wide variety of things. So there's always something percolating. Uh, we have specialists in every field and we have a lot of, of expertise in the building, but uh, we all kind of bounce things off of each other. So uh, one day you might give, get an, a, uh, an idea from a percussion guy. You might get it from uh, you know, an accordion uh, product manager or whatever. So um, it's interesting to see different takes and draw on different experiences. And uh, it, it makes us stronger, I think, as a, as a company to bring all of this combined uh, knowledge together. And it gives us different perspectives. So um, that's one of the things I enjoy is having the, the multitude of different viewpoints under one roof. Yeah. And I'm kind of in that same boat. I love the diversity of the company. I personally represent five different brands and I get to work with such an incredible roster. I get to work with anybody from Steven Tyler to Julia Michaels mm -hmm. and, and to be able to have those caliber of artists, um, it makes it a little bit easier when you're not the artist anymore. And you kind of, you know, it was, it was hard taking a step out of that role, but, um, it's been really fulfilling doing this. Very cool. Um, Rock, from working with you for many years, I know that you always bring a lot of passion into every instrument that you design. Nothing, nothing is a throwaway. Everything is very serious. Everything has a real point of view to it. Um, how do you balance that um, diversity that you have at, at KHS America with all those great inputs 
but also creating such a strong uh, brand identity for Lana Kai, right? You know, Lana Kai always looks like a very considered brand with great instruments um, for players all the way from uh, beginning students um, up to the top pros that, that Derek works with. Um, I would just, that, that seems like an incredible, um, I won't say challenge, but you guys do an incredible job in organizing that. And I was just curious, the, the Lana Kai story, how, how you keep that so strong and, and how clean throughout the line. Well, thank, thank you. I, I appreciate your, your observation there. Uh, uh, really, when we, uh, as you know, I'm very, very respectful of, of brands, any brand that I've worked for, and, and we've worked together with several brands mm -hmm. that I, I've designed through the years. Um, I feel it's very important that the brand be what it is. And it's, right. it's when you have problems and you start saying, oh, we can do everything to all people that you start to develop issues. You, you can't be everything to all people. So uh, it, in that same vein, it's important to focus. What are we? What can we do well? And let's do that great. You know, let, let, let's make that our, our statement. But I, I think what I try to do anytime I start working for a brand or designing for a brand is bring it down, uh, dissect it first before you start building. Uh, a lot of people I think would come in and say, oh, I need to do this, I need to do this, and we'll right. see what works, see what sticks. Throw all those darts at the wall, you know. Uh, uh, I, I tend to do the opposite and I tend to uh, try to think of, of what should it be and what can it be and um, not just what what is possible. Uh, in other words, it needs to go in the right direction to match the brand. And so um, with every instrument I design, I, I try to, whether it's a, a, a lower end brand or a higher end brand, I have to put on the hat of the player. What does the player or the consumer need from this instrument? And you can over-design very quickly and very easily and make it so fancy that it's great, but that's not what the player needed out of that. Or it could have a great tone, but be too expensive for, for what the person wanted. So there, there's a balance there that you have to put on different hats. And that's an important part uh, you'd ask about uh, designing before. How do you get into designing? Um, that's an important part of it is as a designer, you're not here to design instruments that you want as much as what's needed in the industry. So I look at it a lot like, uh, you know, the artist wants to paint the picture, but they need all of the colors to be able to do that. So uh, I try to provide those colors, whether it's a darker tone, a brighter tone, something fancy that they're seeing on stage, uh, something they just enjoy, the, the uh, uh, flexibility of the instrument. So that's kind of how I, I stay true to what the brand is. And uh, we, we here in the building break every brand down into uh, kind of the, the purest form of what it is. And every product we develop, we try to run it through that gauntlet. Does this meet the criteria? Not just it's a new product, but does the new product follow what we're trying to do with the brand? And part of uh, the, the cool thing about that is um, then the the market catches what you're trying to pr promote too, and they they start to focus and say, "Oh, I know what that brand is now," and that helps separate because uh, we know there's a lot of brands, there's a lot of choices out there, and so the more you can help the consumer know what you're all about, the the more they can be satisfied with their purchase. I know what this is, and it will deliver, and that's that's kind of the whole essence of what we try to do. No, very cool. Thank you, Rock. Really, really appreciate the detail on that. Um, uh, perhaps a lot of people watching today, uh, at least one of them right here, are guitar players, right? Or perhaps uh, ukulele is not their primary instrument. One of the things that I'm amazed by uh, getting into the, the ukulele world and starting to understand it um, is the incredible culture that goes with the instrument. Um, it seems as though there's a social aspect to ukulele um, and a cultural aspect that Lanakai really contributes to. Um, 
for, for those of us that, uh, that once again play instruments with too many strings on them, perhaps you could uh, enlighten us a little bit about ukulele culture and, and some of the ways that Lana Kai has is intersected with it over the years and, and enriched it. Well, uh, I'll, I'll speak to that, but I know Derek's got a, a, uh, some input on this too. So uh, as far as the, uh, my side, um, I think guitar players are, are just starting to discover what the ukulele can provide them. It's not a, a different fingering as much as it is a, a different tonality, a different layer. And uh, so a lot of guitar players are coming uh, over to a ukulele as a, a a secondary or a third instrument um but it's it's a, a new way of thinking and so uh we're appealing to guitarists because we have a lot of features that are guitarist friendly so uh we have a lot of that culture and when you speak of the culture i, I kind of feel like we're including more of kind of the combo guitar uh culture uh with lanakai than than maybe other brands because we're we're kind of uh guitarist friendly we kind of have that same uh um uh mix of features and things that the guitarist appreciate so um that that's kind of our our thing is uh uh, we're not just appealing to guitar uh, to uh, ukulele players. We want to appeal to the range of musicians that that might not have discovered ukulele yet, or the level of player that started on ukulele and is now looking for a, a nicer instrument, a, a step up instrument. So um, we want to speak to uh, the range of musicians and not only the the ukulele culture, which is a very strong uh, culture. But we want to bring new new thoughts, new ideas into that culture, and it probably comes from the guitar uh, um, side. So, uh, yeah, what are your thoughts? Yeah, and it, me being uh, originally on the educator side as well, and then moving into this this different world, um, it, it's such a great tool for teaching and for either young players that have never played anything, or even older players that want to start a new hobby. And that's where we really see the culture building a lot is in the older demographic graphics there are so many u clubs because they've got a little bit more expendable income they've got more time on their hands and they don't necessarily want to have to learn an instrument that is going to take them months and months just to build calluses and learn the chords mm -hmm. so we've done a really uh, a really good job with harboring that that mentality of all right this is cool because Lanakai can be your first ukulele and then you can be your step up ukulele and then it can be your higher end ukulele as well. So uh, we really try to hit all of those those sides of that market while also, you know, keeping in mind that, like Rock said, we really want to go after those guitarists of the world that might only play it one song or two songs a night. But when they do, we want them to play a Lanakai. Nice. Well, actually, I'm going to take this opportunity real quick to talk about our uh, partnership, our giveaway current, currently right now. We are giving away a Lanakai Julia Michaels White Pearl uh, signature ukulele. So get get into the mix. Head over to any of this, uh, any of our socials that are broadcasting the stream right now, and you can enter to win just by clicking the link. But um, I was gonna say, you guys are mentioning young players and stuff. I'm I'm seeing a lot of young musicians gravitating towards the ukulele. What do you think it is about the ukulele that brings people together? It's 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 becoming a very social instrument. Yeah, it's um, as you mentioned, it's it's easy to play, first of all. So uh, because of the nylon strings and the relatively lower tension, uh, you don't uh, have any uh, uh, pain or uh, something like a, the, the steel string on a guitar uh, would would develop initially. So uh, it's quick to, to learn. It's easy. Most uh, beginning chords at least are, are one or two fingers uh, and so it's a way to to get in easily um, the range of instruments available are uh, relatively easy to to get in at a low level or higher level uh, mid level whatever your budget can provide there's probably a ukulele somewhere in that range that that's going to meet what you need at least to get started um, and then i think there's a lot of uh online content that uh, uh, is driving a lot of this and it's being shared and 
um, it's making it more of a, a community than perhaps it has been uh, in years past. And so I think that's that's really kind of driving what's going on now is um, just it's easy to get into, easy to play. And the, the amount of support that you have, you've got a question, you can always find an answer if you want to learn a song. Somebody's probably done it. Um, and so it's just the, the whole kind of perfect storm. Uh, uh, and not to mention COVID driving everyone inside uh, at the moment. Uh, I'm sure there's uh, many um, uh, ukulele uh, players emerging from this time as well. Yeah. Great, great. Actually, uh, we we are not ignoring the questions that are popping up here. Sugar is saying that I love my ten year old ukulele. So they have one of your ukuleles, and they absolutely love it. Uh, Quiet goodbye is writing um, Fishman as in Fishman pickups. Yes, we we supply Lanakai with uh, ukulele pickups, and he said awesome. Heard great things about your acoustic pickups over the years. Yes. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm going to hand this over to Rob. Uh, here you go, Rob. Absolutely. As as both Derek and Rock were mentioning, it's it's very cool that Lanakai has instruments for people sort of at every level of their musical journey. You make a high quality instrument for them to get started with. Uh, you make the step up instrument for them. Uh, and you make the completely professional um, top of the range instruments as well. and you know, in working with Lanakai here at Fishman, we always try to have the electronics um, really match where the instruments are and make sure they're supporting the direction of the instrument first. And I know one of the one of the most exciting artists uh, playing Lanakai instruments today is Julia Michaels. And Julia, we mentioned uh, regarding the giveaway that we having, which is a Fishman equipped. Uh, signature series Lanakai ukulele. Um, Derek and Rock, could you share a little bit of the story? Um, I think Julia's got a really unique story as an artist and obviously she's reached uh, people in a number of different ways, but for, for those of us that aren't entirely familiar with her career, could you share a little bit of the detail um, of her story, uh, how she came to work with Lanakai, and um, what might be next with the collaboration with Julia? I'll, I'll let Derek start kind of uh, the the story uh, doesn't start recently it actually goes back so I'll let him start and speak about the relationship and then I'll speak to the design yeah um, it, it's it's such a cool story of how Lana Kai and Julia came to be um, Julia is actually from my hometown and I didn't know her um, I I went to high school with her cousins so it was kind of a weird thing how this all started but um, when she was 16 years old, she bought her first ukulele and started writing songs. And that was Alana Kai. And she wrote songs for Justin Bieber and Ariana Grande, Selena Gomez, Britney Spears, Gwen Stefani. And a lot of those were written on her Alana Kai. So um, two years ago, she went on, on a big tour with uh, Keith Urban and then also with Pink. And her drummer was or is a Mapex artist, which is one of our family brands. And uh, he called his artist relations guy here at the company and said, hey, you guys have ukuleles, right? I'm like, yeah, we do. Um, and they're like, well, we're going to Australia. We need ukuleles like tomorrow. Uh, could you help out? So I got uh, in touch with them and I sent them out. And Julia was over the moon because she was like, oh, my gosh, they're Lanakai. That's what I already play. That's what I own. And so she went out and she would do two songs a night with her. Uh, well, it started with a red quilted maple, Lanakai, and she would go out in the crowd and sing her song, Apple. And uh, it just kept taking off and taking off. And we, we just saw all of these new people getting interested in Lanakai that hadn't before. And so uh, as our relationship kind of kept growing and she was touring more and getting bigger, um, we had kicked around the idea of doing our first signature ukulele and was like, well, maybe we should talk to Julia about it. So I flew out to Madison, Wisconsin, and she did a sold out show there um, on her own. And uh, while we were there, we were talking about this idea and she loved it. And that's when the design ideas started coming out. And it's it's been so incredible to see it. And she's featured that ukulele on Songland. Um, and I know that there's some stuff coming up soon that it's going to be featured on that we can't really say yet. Um, but if you watch the voice, you might know. Um, 
So there's what we can't tell you. Nice. So, uh, as far as the design, uh, the way it uh, transpired from there, uh, it was um, a, an idea session. And uh, we, we kind of threw out a lot of ideas, uh, started narrowing things down. Um, took many of them to, to Julia and said, so what do you think of this and this and this? And uh, um, again, from a design standpoint, I always like to, to get really what the artist needs, wants, um, and uh, what they, they expect out of the instrument because different artists uh, through the years have expected different things. And uh, um, Julia was very straightforward. Is She just wanted an excellent instrument that she could play out of the box, that mm -hmm. uh, any of her or many, many fans out there could go into the store and get exactly what she was playing on stage. That was, was very important to her. She didn't want any special bells and whistles that uh, were on her instrument that weren't available to, to her fans. So uh, we started at that. Uh, obviously, uh, it needs to be a, a stable, great instrument. But how do we build in a bit of Julia into this without making it a, a big commercial uh, of her? So uh, she, again, just wanted it to be a nice instrument that anyone uh, would play and not uh, all, all about her. So um, that, that's refreshing when you work with an artist like that, that, that really cares about the instrument and their fans first. So that was very encouraging. Um, but uh, in conversations, we kind of found out that uh, uh, she kept a journal uh, for much of the early songwriting career. I think she still does. Yes, yeah, she still does. And uh, so, uh, and the way she uh, or, uh, kind of dealt with uh, issues and things that were going on in her life were with little images and pictures. And then she would go back and think how those made her feel. And uh, that's where the inspiration for songs came from. So I, I felt that was important that somehow we, we build this, this great story of, you know, if, if something's going on, you can turn it into a positive in your life and draw a little picture about it. And maybe you can write a song about it. So um, uh, we came up with the idea that in the internal sound hole label, um, there are some of Julia's original drawings uh, uh, in there uh, that kind of inspired uh, different songs in different ways. So uh, any of her fans that know that background story about the journal can look inside and, and actually see something that, that Julia herself created. So again, putting a part of that, um, the artist into the, the instrument itself without making it a, a big commercial. It's, it's a subtle feature, but it's one that her fans will, will recognize. Um, and then part of it too is uh, we um, feel music is so important and Julia as well that uh, she has a, a, a foundation and a portion of all proceeds go to uh, her foundation to, to help uh, other kids uh, get started and uh, a successful life. So uh, it, it's kind of full circle giving back. Music gave so much to her uh, when she was young and starting out and is still uh, giving to her. She wants that uh, as part of her story as an ongoing mm -hmm. uh, legacy. Yeah. And, and one other thing with the design part of it, um, and this isn't just because we're on here with you guys. One of the biggest things that she was adamant about was that it had Fishman electronics in it. And that was because with the ones that we, she had before with our quilted maple that she was using all across the world, it had it's equipped with the Fishman electronics and all of the sound guys were like, this doesn't sound like one of those little toy ukuleles and stuff. It, it sounds so good and it's so easy to EQ and through the system. And I mean, these are systems that are sold out arenas. And so she said, when we do this, I want everybody that buys my signature uke to have what I have on stage. And that means that it had to have a Fishman in it. Mm -hmm. Wow, that that's a pretty incredible artist story. And, and Derek, you just kind of stole my next question. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, and, you know, I know that uh, Lana Kai have been longtime great partners uh, with Fishman, and we've worked and collaborated on a, a ton of great sounding instruments. Um, it's, it, I think it really speaks to Julia's integrity and to Lana Kai's integrity that she was so adamant about having that instrument that's available to her fans be the genuine article, right? Be ready, be ready to perform and use um, and built to the same quality level 
uh, that that she plays in you know sold out arenas every night. So um, fantastic, fantastic story. Very very cool collaboration for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So we have uh, Sugar popping up here saying, just signed up for the giveaway. <laughs> Time to upgrade my Lanik Eye. So um, excellent. I'm so glad. Just for those that are just joining on, we are here live with Lanik Eye. We are broadcasting across their Facebook, our YouTube, and also our Facebook. So if you see a link in the description, you can enter to win this amazing Lanik Eye, Julia Michaels, White Pearl, uh, signature ukulele. We were just talking about it, and it is a great instrument. So get your chance to win. We are here with Derek Frank and Rock Clauser. Um, here it is, Richard saying, "I can't believe how much I love my ukulele." So you guys are doing something right over there for sure. <laughs> well, and that that one's that one's fair, but also not fair. Richard is actually one of our uh, very supportive artists on our roster as well, and he plays the red quilted maple that uh, Julia used to play. <laughs> thank you, Richard. Yeah, thank you. I'm posting your question up here again. Thanks, Richard. Appreciate you showing up. Um, the ukulele boom has been going on for some time. So, from your perspective, what created that boom, and uh, what do you think has sustained it? Well, um, the, the Ukulele itself as an instrument, uh, working in retail for several years, was kind of like, oh, yeah, I think we've got one of those instruments uh, for a long time. Uh, I mean, uh, anyone that was in a music store uh, a few years ago would remember they might be back with like a dulcimer or a bagpipe or kind of like, yeah, uh, there's I think we've got a couple. Um, but as you know, it's it's uh, through the roof now. So uh, what kind of caused it? Um, it's it, the history um, going back a few years, uh, say to the 30s. Um, it was really popular in the 30s, and there were different artists through the years. Uh, Formby uh, was a, an English uh, player that uh, I believe was uh, very popular in the 30s. Um, then there was uh, uh, let's see Arthur Godfrey in the these uh, kind of had a TV show. Uh, people usually cite Tiny Tim in the 70s. So it's kind of like every 20 years it was kind of making the rounds. Um, so uh, through the 90s, uh, it's, uh, you know, Israel um, came out with his uh, wonderful world um, and uh, somewhere over the rainbow. Um, and so as as this cycle came back around, uh, it got more support. And I think the support uh, kind of leans to, to what I said before in the the video, uh, kind of kept it going and shared it faster. And uh, so the, the word of mouth uh, got out there. And so um, it got its surge again, and then the surge just exploded. So um, once the, the original... Um, uh, surge came back i think the 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 um, ease and the depth in which it could be shared and experienced and as more companies started to uh, uh, join the the family lonakai was one of the first uh, ukulele um, during this this boom so we we kind of pride ourselves in being uh, kind of one of the the rudders uh, of the um, uh, the boom here but uh, uh, as other companies joined and made different price options available in different colors and styles and and all of the different features I think that just just uh, made it more of a um, uh, yes a trend, but kind of a fashion statement too. People were keeping ukes in their corner of their their bedroom, and uh, you know taking them to uh, different uh, park things, and, and just kind of throwing it in the backpack, uh, so to speak, as the backpack got uh, uh, more popular. So um, I think it's a type of instrument that can be shared. It's easy to carry and all of that so i think that's what sustained it is it just the the sharing capabilities of it and it's been adopted by young old i, I mean there um there are pros the guitar player side of it uh studios are keeping me keeping them uh, uh on display now for another layer 
Um, we have a, an artist that uh, does uh, background music for Disney and Pixar, and he tells us that over 90% of what he does has a ukulele somewhere on it. Maybe not the feature instrument, but it's a layer, it's a texture now that's uh, a appreciated and almost expected by the listener. So um, I, I think that type of support and that type of um, blending across the culture has really supported this particular cycle. Did you have anything? Uh, I mean, they have so many ranges of price points too. And I think that is a huge factor as to why it's still sustain sustainable because you know, the kid that buys one for $30, okay, now it's fun. Now I need a, a better instrument. Now I've got one for a hundred. Now I've got one for 300. So I think that, that the, the instrument has grown so much from just having a few options to having thousands of different options through different brands has made it uh, grow as well. And there's another point I'll add here is the range of instruments. For a long time, uh, it was just a soprano, concert tenor, and baritone. Um, now uh, there are four strings, five strings, six strings, <laughs> eight strings. Uh, ukulele players don't have one ukulele typically. Uh, <laughs> it, it's kind of uh, you, you grow, you grow. They're worse and, than guitarists uh, when yeah. it comes to buying it. <laughs> I don't have one of these. I need one. Type Being of a heavy metal guitar player, I'm, I'm waiting for your eight string ukulele. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I do actually personally own a lot of guys, so I, I love your, your instruments. Um, if there was one thing that your company could set up to do better than anything, anybody else in the world, what is that thing? Take that one. Yeah, I, you know, I think we've touched on this, and I think the biggest thing is one that we are catering to this market that – the ukulele community hasn't really catered to the, the guitarist and the touring and playing musicians where we really push hard on that. But the other thing that I know, and I can personally say this because I'm one that personally handles a lot of this, is that the customer experience for us is second to none. Um, I will personally talk to anyone that owns Alonica. I'm in all of the ukulele groups. I'm the one that's answering the messages as, long, as well as our social media teams. But, you know, we do offer a lifetime warranty. But besides that, it has to be that people not only trust our instruments, but they trust us, that we're going to give them the right advice, that we're going to give them the right support. And that goes so far. And I think, in the, especially in the last three years, that has made a huge difference for us. Yeah, and if there was a message that I would add that we could give to people out there is to try it because so many people are afraid of instruments and I've got to learn this, I've got to do this, I don't know how to read music, I don't know how to do this. Um, if there's some message that we could give to people is get involved with music at whatever level that you can do. Uh, it, it is so rewarding just to sit on your back step or your, your porch or something. Uh, and you may never be professional. But it, your fun that you will get out of this and just sharing it and uh, come up with an idea, write a song about it, um, you know, uh, it's just an incredible experience that you can take through your whole life. And uh, if there was one message that I could give would be the passion for music can be at any level. So experience what you can do at, at whatever level you, you can provide. So. Yeah. Richard popped back in and said, just to back up everything you guys are saying, it's so much fun. It's so easy to play. I can't believe the progress I've made in six months. It's an, it's definitely an instrument that if you're kind of already playing guitar, you could pick up and, and just start jamming on. And Nick is writing that you guys are two absolute red legends right here. So it's just, it's just a feather in yeah. your cap. You guys are killing it. And Nick knows well, it. <laughs> so hey, um, Nick. Nick is an incredible bass player. He plays uh, bass ukulele as well, one of our new ones. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, that has the Fishman Electronics. So if you're out there watching, make sure you check out Nick's stuff too. Nice, nice. So let me ask you this question. Obviously, you've put out a, a wide range of, of uh, instruments. What do you think is the best instrument, personally, that you guys have put out thus far? Okay, so uh, <laughs> which That's child is my favorite? Is That's that your question? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, it, it. I know it's going to sound hokey, uh, but Derek knows me. Uh, He's hokey. It's, it's just just like a, an album. You know, uh, the 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 best thing I put out was the last thing I put out. The best thing I'm going to put out will be the next thing I put out. So, um, 
it, there's there's never uh, the best. Uh, it's it's always a, it's a growing thing. Uh, it's when you have it all figured out is when you absolutely don't have it figured out. So uh, we're constantly looking at what's going on in the market. Um, we're designing for the market and not what we want to see necessarily. It's a, it's an evolving market, and there are uh, players out there that are are driving and pushing this, and that's great to see. Um, it, it's exciting to see music growing with with the ukulele. But as far as the best uh, model. Um, I don't know that, that there is a best. Uh, there's a best for, um, you know, an entry level player. There's a, a group maybe uh, of instruments I would suggest. Um, and the same for mid and, and high. But as far as one instrument fits all, there's no way. So you got to get four or five or six to make sure you're going to meet the needs you're after. So now uh, I'll, I'll give the answer that everybody <laughs> wants to hear. What's the, what's the one that if I'm going to pick just one, because since, you know, these are his babies and he's designed them, I'm going to say the five string flame maple. I love our five strings. The fact that you have the octave above and the octave below, uh, it's, it's a game changer, especially for someone who's a guitarist that wants to solo on a ukulele you don't have that reintroduced string but you're also not losing that high string as well so you don't lose that drone string so if you're watching and you haven't tried a five string ukulele do it and i recommend the flame maple uh we make it in acacia as well but i love the flame maple okay one. so since he said it <laughs> if you're a guitar player and you've been a little hesitant to jump into the ukulele market because of the the uh, tuning uh, of the high uh, string on the the one side the uh five string is built for you as he said we have so many guitar players that pick it up and that's that's the reason is they don't have to worry about the high string so uh the uh, guitar player in you will love the five string that's why yep. uh, a guitar player sits here telling you about a five string so. a drummer who plays guitar oh drummer okay. yeah it's yeah. even worse <laughs> wow <laughs> Excellent. Just a quick reminder to everybody, we are live right now with Lana Kai. Uh, we're broadcasting across our socials, their socials, but we are also doing this great giveaway. Uh, Lana Kai Julia Michaels signature ukulele. If you haven't entered to win yet, we're giving one away for free. Just look in the description and click the link to get to win. I'm going to pass this off to Mr. Rob Ketch. Excellent. Well, guys, thank you so much for taking all the time today. Um, I've learned a lot about uh, Lana Kai and what you do, even though we've worked together uh, for many years and really appreciate that. Um, I, I did want to have that sort of parting question, which was, what is next? What is coming up for Lana Kai that you can share with us today? Um, uh, directions, hints, specific plans, uh, we'd, we'd love to hear uh, what you're thinking about for the future uh, as it's available to talk about today. Well, um, <laughs> uh, I can say it'll probably have Fishman Electronics. Yeah. All right. Uh, I, I, yeah. Thank it you. We'll have that. Cool. Um, the uh, as we talked about designing, the, the one thing you want to do is not take away something that's working. And uh, as you mentioned, Rob. Fishman and uh, Lanakai were actually partnering long before I was uh, around with Lanakai. So uh, when I redesigned it, that was one thing I didn't want to change. It's working and it's worked well for years. And uh, we get excellent uh, reports from sound guys that say, man, the Lanakai, I can EQ that thing uh, with the uh, Fishman in it. It's great. So uh, sound guys, uh, even in Europe have commented about how great it is and all across the U S here. So, um, uh, that there's, that's one thing I won't change. So in the future cool. I can, I can release this, uh, um, uh, that it will probably have Fishman on it. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> there's that, uh, that's good. it will follow what we're saying as far as providing what, what the player wants. But again, yeah. uh, I'm keeping my ear to to the market. So I think you're going to see um, some new things. I have things percolating all the time. Um, so I don't want to release it uh, uh, so much so right now. But uh, he knows I've always got uh, mad scientist stuff going on. So. He does. He really does. And, and if I knew, I don't keep secrets very well. So I would tell you. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. the last guy you want to tell. 
any secrets because I'm going to tell every artist on the roster what's coming up. So when we le- we want to release something, we tell Derek. So he spreads the word immediately. Yeah, so. I have a big mouth. It's okay. There we go. Awesome. That's why I'm here. So. Fantastic. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. We I, I think we're pretty much up on time, but I can't thank you enough for being on this live feed and sharing your socials with us so we can get the message of Lanakai out to the world. Uh, I'm going to do a quick uh, exit, but I would want to thank you personally for showing up. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we thank appreciate you it. This was a so lot much. of fun. Yeah, we definitely have to do it again soon. All right, guys, everybody, this was the Fishman Partnership Series. Uh, again, we are giving away a free Ronakai Julia Michaels signature ukulele. Click the link in the description to find out how to win. But we will be here every day at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time with another partner, Fishman partner, that is. And uh, just keep subscribing to our channel, clicking the like and subscribe button, and uh, set your notifications so you don't miss out on any of these events. And we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for showing up.